Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Purveyors of Health. Today, we have special guest Kevlar. I happen to know him personally, so I'm so excited for what you're going to share today. He's certified in breath work, sound healing, yoga, and life experience alone is <laughs> certification or not. So welcome, Kevlar. Hi, thank you so much. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Glad everyone's here sharing this space and time together. So um, I'd like everyone to just basically right now become aware of how you feel right now and just observe that feeling. So breathe in and touch base with yourself and observe. We're gonna go ahead and set our intentions, which is going to be for love and peace and harmony for this time and space right now. As life uh, only gets better with each breath of gratitude and joy as we take. So I'm gonna go through a series of some breath work right now, just because we're all coming in and joining together so we can harmonize together right now and feel the joy and love of each other. So we'll do this breath box work. So it's going to be breathing in through the nose for five, holding for five, exhaling for five, and holding for five. Again, so we breathe in through the nose, hold for five, exhale for five. So we're just doing five, 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 and five. And it's just basically, if you can, in your mind, we're just creating a quick little box. So go ahead and begin as we breathe in through the nose, in for five. Hold. Exhale for five. Hold. Breathe in through the nose for five. Hold, exhale, awesome. If everyone could just please just drop your shoulders down, release and relax if you haven't already. We're just gonna do another breath, which is an own breath, just breathing in through the nose, exhaling out with ohm. Uh, you should be feeling your vibration of OM, your tuning, feeling that throughout your body. So breathing in, we're going to go OM. So on the count of three, we'll start and all together, OM. So in through the nose and out through the mouth with your OM. A-U-M, OM. Ready? One, two, and three. OM. Again, breathe in through the nose. Exhale. Om. One more time. In through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Om. Awesome. So I asked how you all felt at the beginning and I want to ask you that again now. So just observe how you're feeling right now. This is going to be a way for us to go into a breath technique. It's an attitude breathing technique. So we can always pause and observe and breathe anywhere at any time. And that is giving us the power uh, as we do breath work to become aware and the breath allows us to live in a way of consciousness so that we are aware of traumas or triggers that we are encountering before they even arise in our energy field. So the breath is one of those ways for us to be able to live in a conscious state. 
by just becoming aware. It's the prana, it's our life force. So um, as we observe, uh, we're gonna go ahead and feel your emotions, feel your feelings now. Go ahead and um, put your hand over your heart where there is touch, the mind goes and breathe in. Start breathing in a nice rhythm, hand over your heart. Now breathe in through your nose with an attitude that you're seeking, continue to breathe. You're seeking appreciation, love, caring, joy. Tap into that emotion. As you breathe in, breathe into the heart center. Go ahead and feel that joy from caring for your baby, for caring for your animals, for the birth of your child, the appreciation of your mother, your family, the joy that you receive from giving to others. Feel the love and that joy and drop right into that heart as you breathe in and change that attitude through the breath by bringing in that prana, by bringing in that intention and lifting your elevation simply by breathing in and breathing out. Awesome, go ahead and bring yourself back and bring in through breathing in through the nose and breathing out through your mouth. Hopefully everyone now is um, harmonized and we're all feeling amazing and in a nice feeling of bliss right now. So today I really um, was just gonna have a conversation with Mal, my friend, and Mal and I have um, met and um, she is uh, part of the Purium family as am I. And this has been a really amazing channel to be able to plug into other like-minded individuals. Um, so a little bit about myself. I um, was uh, born in, in a uh, Roman Catholic family and uh, was very into the um, church growing up. And uh, I actually did a lot of work um, in the summers with adult and children that were disabled through the Catholic Church and the diocese. Uh, my mother and my grandmother, my whole family are Irish. Uh, uh, and uh, they were very um, into the Catholic traditions as well as the Irish and the, we married into the Italian family on another side. So the um, later on, I ended up following through with uh, that and I became a, um, a missionary and I was one of the first boots on the ground in Russia when communism fell in 1993. And then in 94, when uh, the Northwest earthquake hit in uh, January 31st at 4.31 a.m., uh, I was a missionary and went here uh, in uh, LA in Sand Valley and was able to help uh, rebuild there. In Russia and Paris and other parts of the world, uh, we did a lot of work with orphanages, bringing in water. Um, so <clears throat> needless to say, I've always been a seeker of the spirit. Um, I, um, you know, at the age of 17, stopped drinking alcohol. My family were, uh, you know, um, very loving and kind. I grew up in a very large family. I was uh, the baby of 29 grandchildren, so I was the last male. Um, of 29 grandchildren and the sixth child of my um, mother and father. And uh, my grandmother had passed at 106. So she was born in uh, 1894 and then passed in 2002. So she had lived in three centuries. Um, so my mother and my grandmother, um, they didn't have hot water and running water uh, as we do now, uh, but yet uh, throughout, you know, later on, uh, my family were developers in the Midwest, <clears throat> so they actually built and designed Notre Dame University Library and um, 
the dormitories there as well um, and built those as well. So uh, we were very connected to the Catholic church and um, to the community as well. So I owe that to my uh, uncle who had just passed away. He started the Bricklayers Union out of Gary, Indiana, where I was uh, born in Hobart, the city next door to, to that. Um, and to give you an idea, that's right outside of Chicago, about 30 minutes and I could see downtown Chicago from Crown Point, Indiana. Um, but I came out here as a teenager on my own um, and worked for my family. And uh, as I said, I uh, was very much into God um, and the spirit. Uh, when I was young, <clears throat> you know, I was, uh, I was able to feel the energy of women that were um, pregnant and, and know that there was a baby, a newborn energy there. Um, there was a lot of things uh, later on as I turned six and seven where I was sent uh, for testing for, you know, basically having a lot of questions. I loved science and math and all these things in school. I talked a lot. So, um, you know, at one point, my mom uh, being that my grandmother never allowed alcohol in the house. She never smoked. My mother never smoked. My mom never drank. Uh, both of them were prayer warriors. I would wake up at four o'clock in the morning, either sleeping at grandmother's house or at my own house. And my mother would be, you know, praying out loud or grandmother out loud um, and meditating. So that um, was just part of the culture. And my mother would, you know, do her yoga and such um, in the mornings and close herself off and take that time um, to do that. So uh, at 17, I actually found yoga. Uh, I quit drinking and then just basically um, what was called uh, been a born again. So I became a Christian. And later on, I studied theology, got a degree in theology and became a pastor of a Southern Baptist Church and a big um, church here in San Diego, which is a, a mega church. So I, I worked a lot under the men's ministry and uh, saw a lot of things. You know, I was um, struggling my entire life. As I said, at 17, I had stopped drinking alcohol. Um, not, you know, it was because it didn't serve me. Um, and my mom had me tested, as I said, uh, when I was like seven, um, eight years old. So they knew I had an allergy to sugar, uh, caffeine. Mom, like at one point, had none of that stuff in, in my reach. She had special chocolates and, and such. At one point, though, the doctor that we, the family doctor, uh, convinced my mom to give me Ritalin. So unfortunately, that um, didn't work out well for me. But, um, you know, that is part of this whole story of us, you know, basically going through this process of life. Um, you know, at three and a half, I was, uh, had tonsils that were taken out of my throat. And uh, through meditation, I did not have this recollection, but um, through a lot of body work, breath work, I came to a realization that, you know, at three and a half, I had my tonsils taken out. And that was in the 70s. And at the 70s, they were used in PCP or angel dust in anesthesia and, and, and all children and, and, you know, everyone. So, but in 76, they outlawed it because they realized the side effects and what was happening um, because it just went rampant. So through that, I um, would wake up in complete fear and just rage, um, you know, and it wasn't uh, through breath work that I was realizing that, you know, I'm having these traumas and I'm having issues with breathing. Um, so later, you know, this is basically not just the, the mask because in essence, that's my first memory is putting on a black mask, which was my going into surgery. Um, prior to that, I was in bed with my parents, you know, got out, went to surgery. I remember everything very vividly. Uh, so, you know, the, between the medicines and the medicine of, um, you know, the Ritalin, uh, you know, there's certain things I believe, especially going to anesthesia that happens to the subconscious and the conscious mind. So we cannot understand that. I don't think anyone does. So um, I believe at three and a half going into a subconscious state uh, with, you know, whatever I was put under, I definitely opened my mind at that point. Um, so I was very uh, spiritual and saw uh, spirits at that young age and saw energies. Uh, which once I was put on Ritalin, it just shut me down and I wasn't even, I never talked anymore. Um, so uh, 
mom basically ended up taking me off of that when she saw the uh, effects that it was literally having on me. So um, long story short, forwarding fast forward, um, you know, basically as um, a pastor and then coming out of that and working in the world of, of um, construction and consulting and the entertainment industry and, um, it, you know, different industries, I um, have come, you know, through yoga and through breath work, um, being able to basically come to a realization, the suffering in which, you know, um, I've been putting myself through, uh, you know, not only just body wise, there's a whole difference between the mind, the body and the spirit. Um, you know, I've been through um, many accidents, um, you know, in the last 10 years, I've, you know, um, I have uh, snapped and cracked my neck and had two fusions. I was shot five times. Uh, I was in a coma for over a month and had to learn how to walk and talk um, and uh, basically um, <laughs> rehabilitate myself to the point to where I am today. And so um, through yoga, really, uh, that has been the, the aspect of where when I got shot in 2010, I jumped up to over 316 pounds and I'm 166 now. So um, through, you know, basically my thyroid, every part of my intestines, all my, every organ was outside of my body during surgeries and all of my blood um, was transfused. So, um, you know, there's things that happen. And when I came out of that uh, surgery, there were, you know, a lot of things that um, I had a basically, obviously a, a near death experience. So um, there's been quite a few of these experiences. You know, uh, I had a shoulder uh, injury at age 19 working for my family. And that was somewhere where I woke up with 106 degree temperature in the ER and they told me they, you know, found my parents in Chicago and they gave, you know, the doctors uh, the go ahead to amputate my right arm. So by God's grace, my arm did not have to be amputated. But again, through whatever circumstances life threw at me, I basically got thrown out of the game, had to, you know, wear an IV heart uh, pick for, uh, you know, the IV antibiotic for, you know, three months and, had to, again, to just rehabilitate myself. So, and throughout accidents. So I say all this not to like war stories because the stories are basically something that we're, we're not trying to promote, but basically to um, help those that are out there that, you know, basically <laughs> I was pulling my hair out as a young child trying to figure out, you know, what the heck is going on. I had so much you know, rage and so much going on. Um, and I was scared. Um, but, you know, I, I overcame and overcame. Um, and then, you know, again, overcame and overcame again, when, you know, accidents happened, um, we get to a certain point in life and think that, you know, we've made it. And then somehow or another, a tragedy happens. Um, my normal day to day now is I work in personal injury here in San Diego. So I see families that lose their loved ones. I see people that have lost their legs in a matter of, of a second. And, you know, I sat with over a thousand clients in a year and, you know, things get really real when you see these things on a daily basis. And um, yoga, like I said, has really been something where, you know, the, 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 throughout my life through those surgeries, some of those times they gave me prescriptions like I had 103 kidney stones at one point I was the, elected in as the vice president of the chamber of commerce and you know I had multiple companies an elder in the church and 103 kidney stones and got past oxycontins for the first time in my life and <clears throat> that basically spun me and you know put me in a state of unconscious state so unfortunately um, I've woken you know up to where you know, I can breathe now. And I understand that I don't have to blame myself for all of those situations that came about that I've been struggling and, you know, trying to get through all of these hurdles in life that's just been 
you know, thrown at me, some of them by no means of my own, but yet, you know, deep depression and all of it goes to the conscious and subconscious state. And, you know, after many surgeries and doing meditation and going into a deep state of consciousness um, and being able to live by the spirit, basically. So for me, it is walking, you know, I can sit in my cave and meditate and going out into the community is when I put my yogi to the test in essence. And that is when, you know, at some point or another, when I was chanting, I was at a beach and it was to remove rage because I have a lot of rage. I had a lot of rage, right? Um, it's been programmed in me um, and a lot of hate. So that chant, by just believing, by reading those words that were transcribed from Sanskrit to English, I chanted that in the front of everyone, with no believing and, and just no fear and walked out of that park bench, dropped to my knees in more pain than I've ever felt and then walked 20 feet and then felt the most euphoric oneness I've ever felt in my life. Um, so simple things that we are uh, capable of doing, which is, you know, I brought up that my grandmother, my mother, they didn't have hot water. They didn't have, you know, these things growing up. These are kind of the, the new things in which we have in this world in which we live in now. Um, and simple little things that we're able to do now because we all have traumas. That's my story. You know, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a Hollywood movie. You know, it's, it's wow. Really? But some of us have even, you know, more wild stories or have less trauma in our lives. But the bottom line is, is a book falling could be a trigger for any one of us uh, at any given moment. And <laughs> in essence, that breath work that we did where we can change our attitude um, immediately just by becoming aware of our consciousness and becoming aware of our breath. Um, I, I always say that, you know, trauma breath, that breathing in through the nose three times um, is that footprint of, or fingerprint of us crying as a young child. Um, so, it, you know, as soon as we come out, we're crying and we are breathing in and holding and, you know, resisting um, immediately. So uh, breath work, in essence, by just sitting in a, in a beautiful setting and doing breath that was traumatic breath, it reprograms. And one of the things that I'm a big believer of is through all of this trauma that I've been through and all of the nonsense that I've had to go through in life to get to where I am now, um, it's, it's amazing for the heart to open. So this heart is a brain in essence. And, you know, there's so many ways for us to be able to feel love. And I always share that, you know, a, a woman can have a child and, and love. I mean, to have a child must be the most amazing feeling in the world. So a woman must elevate that love once that child is born to a whole nother echelon. I mean, men, we cannot have that we can participate but it goes to show the level of love that we are able to tap into uh, those emotions uh, are all here the power within us is all within us so um you know even though i had a lot of background and religion it was you know the coming to a realization that my body is the temple i can't continue just going around and you know living at large uh, being a consultant for other people and putting my body in harm's way and just being a rhino. And that in an essence was just the opposite of what I was being taught, what was programmed. So I had to unwind all of this, what was programmed through Alcoholics Anonymous, through you know Christianity, through the Catholicism, um, Southern Baptists, uh, all the different tenets that fall in it. And then, you know, when I studied, the, they didn't really go into the 7,000, 4,000 Vedic literature. And in essence, when Yogananda came to America 100 years ago, 
He came, you know, to Encinitas, which is now the yoga capital of the world. He came and was given a visa by President Wilson, who ended World War I. And, and basically, that was the same time frame in 1918 as N1H1. So he came, Yogananda, under the pretense of the self-realization fellowship, which they basically said you need to come as a church, as a religion, but they came as a science. So when we actually study uh, the eight limbs or study yoga, study breath work, study you know, all of uh, the science behind this uh, and the energy fields of the chakras and being able to tap into this heart consciousness, which is you know, just 0.1 more hertz of being able to raise our vibration. It is something that we can constantly do at any given moment. And by doing the breath work for me, like, you know, walking into somewhere, as I said, a book drops, someone's yelling, there's intense music going on, or it could be something very subtle. When we live by the spirit and start living by the spirit and trusting in faith, in essence of us and trusting in us, because if I can't trust myself, then who can I trust in this world? So we must trust, we must get to a point to we are the master of our body as opposed to the body being the master of us. So I always talk about, I lost two friends of suicide this month. So I speak in which, you know, there's two, three, three thoughts to suicide. The thought of suicide, the next thought is how, and then you're in the act. And you can use that on cigarettes, gambling, any obsessive compulsiveness of the mind, which is in essence, what we suffer from as humans, I believe, which is the obsessive compulsiveness, always chasing that next thought, the next thing, and always going after the next you know, compulsive thought. So instead of drilling down on these thoughts and or beating ourselves up from the past, which the mind apparently does not know the difference between what is happening right now or a movie that happened five years ago that I watched that shows a horrific you know, killings and war. In essence, I probably would not even know what war was unless I saw it on a video or saw it on a movie that was made for us to watch and see. So when I continue to play these tapes over, it's basically my mind is living with those emotions that have been stored in this body and these atoms. So what I have found is that we're able to write over the DNA, hey, all this hate, all the, the things in which you know, I was brought up into being the last male of 29 grandchildren and, you know, that world in which we all, in essence, came from that is ending, in essence, I believe, um, that through the breath, that is the prana, it's the life. So instead of waking up now in that state of what the heck rage and, you know, fear and anxiety um, from, you know, childhood on, now I'm able to take control. And when I stopped drinking at 17, I, I tried drinking a few different times throughout and never worked out. But the bottom line is, is it's about me having control, me being in control. Because when I am the master of this temple, then life is amazing. When I start getting off of the ego and just you know, wearing off into the world, it's one of those things of where indulging in these things, as Newton says, for every action, there's a greater or equal reaction. So tapping into that love consciousness and believing the, the faith aspect of believing in self and believing that there's a divine supreme power that has made each and every one of us perfect in the image of our creator. All of the earth, all of these plants, every creator, we've been created by a creator to follow our passion of creating. And that's simple. That's our life. That's our mission is to love and to continue creating and co-creating with others. Um, one of the most amazing things, uh, you know, I, I saw and felt watching a pyro, which is an, a, you know, an artist that was juggling artwork, right? She's basically doing this work with fire and totally saw the love and the passion that that person was sharing and went into 
a transcendental state in a meditative state by the love that that artist is sharing. And it's no different than any of us as artists. That's what we are, we're artists sharing our love. And we fill ourselves up with so much love by sharing that love with others and others feel that love as well. Unfortunately, some of us, including myself, could not re receive love because our heart has been hardened. Our heart has been broken. From the time of a little child, every time I was told no, <laughs> I was, uh. so, you know, it's these things that by becoming aware and start reprogramming the DNA that's in, you know, every facet of my body, that this is reprogrammable. The fact that I've gone through so much trauma and been rehabilitated, uh, you know, is phenomenal. And it just goes to show that we all are able physically, mentally, because the mental aspect of this is something that isn't shared. When I was a pastor, when, you know, I was going to therapy, when I was doing, you know, any of these things, uh, they didn't ask about my breath and show me, hey, here, let's just slow the, the mind down a little bit. Um, you know, many of us, most of us anyways, have that mind that just continues going and going and going um and you know through this breath work and through the yoga other uh different things that i've done through uh, music and you know um food purium is definitely a big part of you know my day-to-day -day regimen being vegan uh so you know I'm just grateful really to honestly to be here uh, at, a, at, a, at a mindset at, that is way different. And life was amazing. And life just keeps getting better and better and better. Um, and for me, it's just like, as I said, drinking from a fire hydrant because there's such, I mean, all of us sharing information like this and coming together, um, inspiring one another. Um, you know, I've gotten so many books that, were recommended so many great nuggets from other downloads. Um, so the world that we live in now, it's amazing that we're able to share and come together and love and not have condemnation and being able to, um, you know, grow in essence. Uh, so I'll just leave it open. I don't know what time it is right now. If anyone has any questions or anything, I'm not seeing. Um, yeah, can, there's a there's a lot of love in the chat, Kevlar. There's a lot of people in here that have um, common threads, which I know we all know that on some level. But yeah, if anyone wants to ask any direct questions to Kevlar, feel free. I'll throw a I'll just throw a couple words in there, Kev. Thanks so much, man, for sharing your story. It, a lot of what you shared resonates with myself in some ways. I was raised Catholic. I had my tonsils removed when I was four. I have been on Prozac and all kinds of medications. I've been through severe traumas in my life, brain cancer. So man, everything you say, I think I can feel a little bit of that in myself. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. I'm so happy you're here, brother. <laughs> Kevlar, what started your breath work journey? Where did that come into your, into your sphere? Um, I think more than anything up into the, the yoga aspect of it. See, um, the funny thing is, is when I was the size of like Arnold Schwarzenegger at the age of 19. So I was 245 pounds and had massive arms of like 20, almost 21 inches because now looking back at the fact that, um, you know, I got bullied as a child and I was the youngest. And by the time I was 19, nobody could mess with me because I became this monster in essence to protect myself, um, which is basically a big part of why it was so hard to crack this heart. Uh, because I've been cr trying to crack my heart and try to have feelings and emotions and love beyond what I felt, which was pretty hard. 
Um, so the, through, you know, there's so many things. I drowned, you know, a couple different times. I drowned out here in the ocean and on PB Drive surfing. Uh, so I never went back in the ocean. Uh, so by basically starting uh, breath work, uh, seeing by just doing, breathing we do without even thinking about it. It's a program, it's like walking and talking. But to sit down and do it, it's one of the hardest things I can ever do. But what I get from it, is unreal did what i get from meditation and the downloads and the clarity and the guidance that i get from my divine power by just sitting in quiet or just meditating and chanting uh with the intentions of you know i was named after saint michael and my first name is kevin which is saint kevin of ireland so you know i was always seeking and, and looking of how to touch and become closer to this divine power of the downloads I've had, um, even in some of these surgeries, you know, I had a download from 2000, uh, when I was 18 years old from that surgery, when I almost lost this arm, that all came to a revelation in 2020. And with numerology. So as you know, Mal, I'm totally into numerology. I follow numerology. I believe when, you know, when, you hear that, look at the clock now, uh, call your mother now, you know, make a right turn now. When we live in that intuition, when we follow that intuition and understand the difference between the body and the spirit mindfulness, then, then in essence, I mean, I think we're like solid and rock on. The trauma though, breath work, I'm constantly having to do it all day long. You know, if I'm out in the world, walking around wherever I am, you know, there's a constant um, things that either trigger me or, you know, whatever. So, you know, becoming Kevlar, like bulletproof in essence is, you know, that is what in every single day when I go out, winning is basically loving on every single person and treating every single person I come across as if it's my soul and me within. And that's really the, the what has brought me to this, you know, world of oneness is that I am you and you are me. Um, and I've done a lot of, said a lot of dumb things and, and, you know, throughout life. And it's part of the waking up process, I believe. And, uh, you know, it's, it's an, an amazing life. I love it. Yeah, your, your journey has been so fascinating to me. I know, you know, we met in the desert <laughs> randomly is very interesting meeting you and um learning about your story what kind of advice would you give to someone who is just uh maybe feeling a little bit stuck right now on their spiritual path because that happens sometimes you know and uh, what are some tools that you use to get yourself back on track specifically uh for example the um attitude breath that just dropping into a heart consciousness to where we bring ourselves back. We can tap into those emotions at any given moment. And the energy that those feelings of appreciation, the joy, people are actually healing and cancer and terminal diseases in the masses with some of these uh, you know, doctors that are doing some of these retreats through this breath work, it's so, I, I highly recommend anyone uh, that is suffering from depression, I mean, or even whatever. I mean, bottom line is, is I believe this breath work is the life force. It's the way for us to, through meditation, to launch off into a whole nother universe of information and to heal ourselves so that we don't have to continue shaming ourselves and, and beating ourselves up. And it's a whole nother mindset. So just becoming aware and conscious of the breath and then putting it into practice, um, it's like a hundredfold. You, you, it's, it's amazing. What did you notice specifically, if you could point it out just for you personally, um, that leveled you up, so to speak, when you started with Perium, taking Perium products? I'm curious. Well, I think I did like five detoxes last year um, as well. Uh, you know, the Perium product, 
I can actually go without food for a long lengths of period of time with uh, their MVP or their, um, you know, products of, uh, so I got them all here, um, their amino acids. Um, I was in the entertainment industry for a short period of time um, for a little less than a decade. Um, so I had a, a plastic surgeon in La Jolla that had prescribed me at the age of 21 when I got into the entertainment industry, um, Pro Propecia. And hair has always been like my thing as far as the ego and vanity. I'm a vanity smurf. Heck, I got blue on. It's one of my favorite colors. So vanity, uh, but this product here, Renew Hair and Skin, I mean, the Joint Flex, these products, uh, I got off Propecia. Uh, it was one of the last medical prescriptions. I, it was so embedded in me that I didn't even think it was a prescription anymore. And one day I realized, holy cow, I'm taking a prescription. So um, yeah, these products I believe are amazing. Um, I'm 46 years old and I feel like I have a body better than I've ever had. I've been you know, into the fitness side of it. The wellness side of this is amazing as far as the mind, um, you know, the clarity, uh, the meditation aspects. Um, do I do do a lot of meditation. I get up at 3.33 every single day. I get up with the sun. I, I meditate as the sun goes down. I do as much as I can as a Vedic yogi here in America because I totally believe that we are capable through the science of the Sanskrit, the Vedic uh, scriptures, uh, you know, of living a life that we were promised um, instead of living this lie um, or wearing all these other masks and being our unique self, uh, which is uh, very free. It's amazing. I'm so happy to know that they are helping you so much on your journey because I, I, I know that, you know, like I said, I, I know you personally, so I know how hard you work on yourself and expanding and growing and, and learning how to navigate this world with all these um, experiences that you've had that are not very common <laughs> and we yeah. always surface, but it's such an inspiration to hear these voices of passion because they believe that they're the trailblazers for change. Does anyone else have any questions or comments that they want to make? Feel free to chime in anytime. And you guys are feeling any of Kev's story, just drop like a one in the chat, you know, show some love because I think all of us can relate to a little bit of what he's doing, what he's been. Through. Yeah. The one thing, one thing that through breath work that showed me a lot is perfectionism. And it's, you know, really overrated that, um, you know, I was, like I said, born in, as, as a child, I got into architectural design really young because my family wanted me to be an architect being in the development business. So, I mean, you're talking about 30 seconds, 16 you're talking about perfectionism to the, I mean, beyond what the eye can even see. And as a child growing up in that family, I was told 110% wasn't enough that eyes are always watching you. So, you know, I was really beating myself up my entire life. And it wasn't until I realized that I need to start perfection this, this body, this temple, and start understanding the science behind this. Because I saw what I was capable of doing by, you know, completely being... <laughs> basically dead to being coming back to life i had a heart attack three days after my mom passed away and came out of body and was upset because it took so long for the nurses to come back and revive me and got an argument about that with them so you know th there is so much that we are capable of tapping into as far as the power of the supreme and being able to be guided through this spirit or you know the shakti or, or the kundalini or whatever we want to call it and whatever you know um religion or whatever science uh that you may come about but i believe we can all find it from all different you know nations creed you know wherever we can all get there um it's just a matter of sharing and talking with one another. Um, you know, there's many people out there. Like I said, I just had a gentleman over in my house last night that just shared with me that, you know, 
he, he, he has this massive awakening. He doesn't even know what's going on. He has all this love. He had so much rage in his heart. And all of a sudden he has so much love and he, he doesn't know what's going on in his life. Um, I'm running across so many people that all of a sudden this is happening without, you know, anything. They're, they're not asking. It's just happening. Um, so I think for people like ourselves that are able to come along and be guides and help people um, in this time, obviously, because honest to God, I've been in, I've been all over the world. I was a missionary. I've never seen anything like this in my entire life. Um, and I was actually part of a 20,000 person mega church. And this is something that is without a doubt, um, I'm putting so much energy behind this because it's, it's amazing and it, it is healing and it's saving souls to the point to where, you know, we can live in a way that beyond my comprehension, I'm living beyond. Hi, and I, I say I, I've been doing some guided meditations with Joe Dispenza for a while. That's really like getting that sort of, you know, elevated emotion with a clear intention, kind of being grateful for things that have not yet arrived in my life, but things that I have faith in. I think faith is a huge component of healing. Yeah, and, um, yeah man, again, very resonant with everything you're sharing. Thank you so much, Kev. Yeah, the faith and, and uh, uh, what was it? Uh, when I was out there with uh, Troy, uh, he did the bath. I don't know if you guys have done this, but that, you know, going into an ice bath is so opening of the heart. And that was just another technique that basically blew my heart open and just poured love in. Um, so if you guys haven't done an ice bath, that is something that I highly recommend. Uh, and I do cold showers every single day now and have been, and that is very grounding for me. And it helps me every single day. That's something I, I feel like all the fears that I have throughout my day, I'm able to kick in those doors and slay those dragons and get on with my life where before there was a lot of fear, fear of going into the ocean, fear of breathing, you know, um, ninety percent of us don't even breathe properly. So, learning how to breathe properly, reprogramming the DNA through the breath work, man, it's been a lot of fun, fun time. Hey, I just wanted to say, hey, my my name's Travis from Maine. I just wanted to say, hey, thanks so much for sharing. Um, this has been one of those uh, weeks for me where I've just been one of those guys who's just been feeling all that love and um and it's just been like what the hell is going on why am i feeling this love i uh joined joined clubhouse have you heard of that app before no um oh it's it's basically an app where people just talk to each other so all these people are just sharing all this love and just communicating back and forth and I've been experiencing all these people who are just, this lady was just talking about her six hour love drunkness. She was just feeling so excited and, and filled on love. And um, I didn't know if you, maybe it seems like you lead meditations if you just wanted to lead us on a quick another breath work and kind of reconnect with that um, and kind of take, take in your energy a little bit more while taking our energy and yours all. Cause we are, yeah. we are together, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so let's go ahead and um, we'll phase out with the breath work. So let's just become aware of your feelings right now. Breathing in through your nose, out through your mouth. Go ahead and Put your shoulders down, your hands in your lap. You can lay down if you'd like. Just go ahead and feel again that emotion of caring, the emotion of love, just appreciation and go and breathe in through your nose and drop into your heart. Put your hand over your heart as the mind will go where your hand will go is the touch. 
and smile and feel the love, feel the joy, appreciation. Thank you guys. Thank you all for being here. Thank no you problem. for an amazing hour and allowing to let me speak and on my behalf of my life. Thank you so much, Kevlar, for your time, your wisdom, mm. your heart. I really truly appreciate you so much. Thank um, you. Yeah, I've been wanting you to speak here for a while. So I'm so happy that you finally did. And um, yeah, just uh, thank you so much. Thank you everyone else for joining who's here now, whoever will see this in the future. Um, special thank you to Angelo, of course, for making this such a beautiful space for everyone to be purveyors of health and share in that message. Thank you, yeah. guys. I'll be posting this on my YouTube, um, which all the purveyors of health past episodes have been on. So if you want to check those out, just go to my Instagram and I have a link in the bio for that. Or you can watch this later anytime. <coughs> Thanks, Kevlar. Thanks, Mallory. Thanks, Thank you so Kevlar. Much. Bless you guys. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you, Kevlar. Thank you. Kevlar. Bless, bless. Thank Thank you. Kevlar. <laughs>